The Haunting of Evelyn's Doll. You know the feeling you get when you step into an old attic, dust motes dancing in the slivers of light. That eerie stillness, like the past, is holding its breath. Well, that's where my story begins. In that attic, beneath a tattered sheet, lay a relic from another era, a vintage doll named Evelyn. Evelyn wasn't like any doll you find on a toy store shelf. Her porcelain skin was cracked, her glassy eyes held secrets, and her once luxurious dress was faded, threadbare. I couldn't help but wonder about the child who once cherished her, who whispered secrets into her porcelain ears. You see, my curiosity got the better of me. I couldn't just leave Evelyn in that dark, forgotten attic. So, I brought her down, dusted her off, and placed her on a small wooden chair in my bedroom. I figured she'd add a touch of vintage charm to the place. As the days passed, strange things began to happen. I'd hear faint giggles echoing through the house, like a child at play. Sometimes, I'd find tiny footprints in the dust, leading from Evelyn's chair to the window. But there was no one else in the house, just me. I told myself it was just my imagination, that the old house was settling, creaking and groaning. But then came the whispers. Late at night, when the wind howled outside, I'd hear soft, melodic murmurs. It was as if Evelyn herself was speaking, her voice like a lullaby from a bygone era. One night, unable to bear the mystery any longer, I sat beside Evelyn and spoke to her. What secrets do you hold, dear doll? I murmured, half expecting the walls to close in on me. Suddenly, a chill swept through the room, raising goosebumps on my skin. The air seemed to thicken, and I held my breath. And then, as clear as day, I heard a voice, a child's voice, whispering in my ear. Find me, find me, it pleaded. My heart raced. It wasn't a hallucination. Evelyn was alive, in some strange ghostly way. But find what, and who was the voice calling for? Determined to unravel the mystery, I delved into the history of the house. It didn't take long to uncover the tragic tale of the previous owners, a family torn apart by loss. Evelyn, it seemed, belonged to a little girl named Emily, who disappeared one stormy night, never to be seen again. That night, I sat in the attic, surrounded by forgotten relics, and I felt a connection. I knew I had to find Emily, for her and for Evelyn. The attic seemed to pulse with energy, urging me on. As days turned into weeks, my search led me to a small cemetery on the outskirts of town. Emily's gravestone stood weathered and alone, a testament to a life cut short. I knelt beside it, heart heavy with sorrow. Suddenly, a gust of wind whipped through the trees, and the world seemed to blur. I blinked, and when my vision cleared, I found myself in a different place altogether. It was a moonlit garden, overgrown with ivy and roses, and there, standing before me, was Emily. She looked just as she must have on that fateful night, her eyes wide with innocence. She took my hand, her touch cold, but filled with longing. Thank you for finding me, she whispered. I couldn't find my voice. Emily led me to a small, forgotten shed at the edge of the garden. With trembling hands, I pushed the door open, revealing a dusty, forgotten chest. As I opened it, my breath caught. Inside lay a collection of letters, diaries and a faded photograph of a happy family. It was Emily's, a glimpse into a life that should have been. The truth was heart-wrenching. Emily's father, consumed by grief, had hidden away all memories of his daughter, unable to bear the pain. As I returned to the attic with the newfound treasures, Evelyn seemed to glow with a strange warmth. It was as if the doll herself held a piece of Emily's spirit. Placing the photograph beside Evelyn, a strange sensation washed over me. The air grew heavy with anticipation, and I felt Emily's presence, a comforting presence, surrounding us. In that moment, the room seemed to come alive with a soft, ethereal light. I watched in awe as Evelyn's cracked porcelain began to mend, her glassy eyes gleaming with newfound life. 
And then the final radiant glow, Emily's voice echoed one last time. Thank you, she said, her words filled with gratitude and peace. As the light faded, I knew the bond between Emily and Evelyn was finally complete. They had found each other, and in doing so, they found a way to touch the world once more. And so, my dear reader, when you stumble upon forgotten relics, when the past calls out to you, don't be afraid. There are stories waiting to be told, connections waiting to be made, and sometimes, in the quietest corners of our lives, we find the most extraordinary magic. The Whispering Hyalum You ever stumble upon something in the attic that sends shivers down your spine? That's what happened to me when I uncovered that old, dusty trunk. And what was inside? A vintage doll, its porcelain face etched with a permanent smile that seemed just a touch too wide. I swear those glassy eyes followed me as I carried it downstairs. I didn't think much of it at first. Just another forgotten relic, right? But then, as the night settled in, strange things began to happen. I'd hear soft footsteps in the hallway, like tiny feet padding against the hardwood floor. And when I'd peek out, there it was, Eloise, as I'd named her, sitting on the living room couch, her eyes gleaming in the moonlight. Now. I'm not one to scare easily, but there's something about a doll that moves on its own that'll send a shiver straight up your spine. I put Alois back in her place, convinced it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. But every morning, there she'd be, in a new spot, as if she had a mind of her own. The rational part of my brain fought with the rising unease. I'd scrutinize the doll, convinced there must be some hidden mechanism a string or a wire, that explained it all. But Eloise was just a doll, or so it seemed. Then came the whispers, I'd wake in the dead of night, to a soft melodic murmur, like a lullaby from a ghostly nursery. My heart pounded, sweat prickling my skin as I strained to catch the words. It was like trying to grasp at smoke, slipping through my fingers. One night, I couldn't take it anymore. I picked up Eloise, her porcelain skin cool against my trembling fingers, and I looked into those unblinking eyes. What do you want from me? I asked, half expecting the walls to close in on me. Suddenly, a chill swept through the room, raising goosebumps on my skin. The air seemed to thicken, and I held my breath. And then, as clear as day, I heard a voice, a child's voice, whispering in my ear, Find me, find me it pleaded. My heart raced. It wasn't a hallucination. Eloise was alive, in some strange, ghostly way. But find what? And who was the voice calling for? Days turned into weeks as I searched for answers. I combed through old records, newspapers, anything that might shed light on the doll's past. And then, buried deep in the archives, I found it, the story of a little girl named Emily who disappeared without a trace. Emily's family had lived in this very house, generations ago. The attic, now filled with forgotten relics, was once her sanctuary. Could it be that Emily's spirit lingered within Eloise? Armed with this new knowledge, I returned to my home, determined to unravel the mystery. I sat with Eloise, speaking softly to her, hoping to reach the restless soul within. Emily, if you're here, Show me the way. The room grew still, the air heavy with anticipation. And then, a soft glow emanated from Eloise, casting an otherworldly light across the room. My heart pounded, the moment charged with an eerie electricity. In that instant, the room transformed. I was no longer sitting in my living room, but in a moonlit garden, overgrown with ivy and roses. And there, standing before me, was Emily. She looked just as she must have on that fateful night, her eyes wide with innocence. She took my hand, her touch cold but filled with longing. Thank you for finding me, she whispered. I couldn't find my voice. Emily led me to a small forgotten shed at the edge of the garden. With trembling hands, I pushed the door open, revealing a dusty, forgotten chest. As I opened it, my breath caught. 
Inside lay a collection of letters, diaries and a faded photograph of a happy family. It was Emily's, a glimpse into a life that should have been. The truth was heart-wrenching. Emily's father, consumed by grief, had hidden away all memories of his daughter, unable to bear the pain. As I returned to the attic with the newfound treasures, Eloy seemed to glow with a strange warmth. It was as if the doll herself held a piece of Emily's spirit. Placing the photograph beside Eloy's, a strange sensation washed over me. The air grew heavy with anticipation, and I felt Emily's presence, a comforting presence, surrounding us. In that moment, the room seemed to come alive with a soft, ethereal light. I watched in awe as Eloise's cracked porcelain began to mend, her glassy eyes gleaming with newfound life. And then with a final radiant glow, Emily's voice echoed one last time. Thank you, she said, her words filled with gratitude and peace. As the light faded, I knew the bond between Emily and Eloise was finally complete. They had found each other, and in doing so, they found a way to touch the world once more. And so, my dear reader, when you stumble upon forgotten relics, when the past calls out to you, don't be afraid. There are stories waiting to be told, connections waiting to be made. And sometimes, in the quietest corners of our lives, we find the most extraordinary magic. The Haunting of Gracefield Manor It was a bitter winter's night when I first laid eyes on that doll. Gracefield Manor, with its dark, looming silhouette against the moonlit sky, held secrets in every creaking floorboard. And there, in the dimly lit attic, amidst forgotten relics and dusty memories, she stood, an elegant porcelain doll, her features worn but somehow still hauntingly beautiful. I'm not one to spook easily, but this doll had an aura about her that sent a shiver down my spine. Her glassy eyes seemed to hold a melancholy depth, and her painted smile, once radiant, had faded into a twisted grin. I could feel the weight of her history, of all the little hands, that had once cherished her. I brought her down to my study, thinking she might add a touch of vintage charm to the room. But as night fell, so did an unsettling feeling. It started with a whisper, so faint I thought it a trick of the wind against the window pane. But then, clear as day, I heard it, a soft, lilting voice, as if the doll herself was speaking. Hello, she said, her voice a breathy sigh, that seemed to hang in the air. My heart raced, my breath hitching in my throat. It was impossible. Dolls don't talk, but there was no denying what I heard. Who are you? I managed to stammer, my voice barely above a whisper. I'm Clara, she replied her porcelain lips not moving an inch. And I've been waiting for you. A chill ran down my spine. My rational mind fought against the rising dread. It had to be some sort of elaborate trick, an illusion. But Clara's eyes seemed to lock onto mine, holding me in a silent gaze. That night, as the clock struck midnight, I heard more voices. Whispers from the shadows, laughter that seemed to dance, just beyond the edge of my senses. It was as if the very walls of Gracefield Manor held secrets, secrets that Clara had somehow awakened. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, that the air held a heavy unseen presence. I felt the weight of countless eyes, all fixed on me, and I couldn't escape the feeling that Clara was the conduit for their gaze. Days turned into sleepless nights, my month's orderly study now filled with the haunting presence of imaginary guests. Clara, her voice a soothing balm, introduced me to her companions, a gruff old soldier named Theodore, a demure lady in lace named Abigail, and a mischievous young lad named Samuel. They became my silent confidence, my spectral companions in this twilight realm. But with every passing day, their voices grew louder, their presence more palpable. It was as if they were demanding something, something I couldn't quite fathom. One fateful night, as the moon hung low in the sky, Clara spoke with a sense of urgency. You must help us, she implored, her porcelain face etched with desperation. The words sent a jolt through me. 
Help them? How? The questions swirled in my mind, drowning out reason. And then, with a sudden dut wrenching clarity, I understood. They were trapped, tethered to this manner, unable to find peace. They needed closure, a release from the chains that bound them to this world. Armed with newfound purpose, I delved into the history of Gracefield Manor. The answers lay buried in forgotten diaries and dusty ledgers. I pieced together the story of family torn apart by tragedy, of secrets that festered like a wound. With each revelation, the voices grew stronger, urging me forward. The weight of their pain became my own, driving me to uncover the truth. And then in the cold, unforgiving light of the attic, I found it, the final piece of the puzzle, a letter written in trembling script. The ink faded, but the words still searing with anguish. As I read the words aloud, a tremor passed through the air. The room seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the moment of release. Then it came, a rush of wind, a chorus of voices, and a blinding light that filled every corner of the attic. I felt a strange sense of weightlessness, as if I were floating on a sea of memories. When I opened my eyes, I was standing in a moonlit garden, overgrown with ivy and roses, before me stood the figures from my study, Clara, Theodore, Abigail, and Samuel. Their eyes gleamed with a newfound radiance, their faces alight with gratitude. Thank you, Clara whispered, her voice no longer haunting, but filled with warmth and light. And as quickly as it had begun, the garden faded, replaced by the familiar attic of Gracefield Manor. Clara, Theodore, Abigail, and Samuel were gone, their voices now silent. I returned to my study, the weight of their absence settling in. The vintage doll Clara stood there, her porcelain face serene once more. She was just a doll, after all. And yet, as I looked into those glassy eyes, I couldn't help but feel a sense of bittersweet farewell. They had found their peace, and in doing so, they had given me a gift, an understanding that sometimes, the past carries a weight that can only be lifted by those willing to listen.